Okay, so that's the beginning. And uh, we'll go from there. But I'm not going to go and show you the entire process. So, we'll let that build its stuff. And um, eventually you're going to see a, an amazing looking um, gimbal. I actually had some mess ups. So like this part right here didn't quite um, make it. It slid, unfortunately, slid off of my bed. But that's okay. We'll just uh, keep going and we'll make one. So by the magic of video, ta-da, it's done. Okay. One of the things that we needed to uh, get was a wing nut like this. Okay, this is a stainless wing nut and this is a, a quarter inch by a quarter inch 20. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take this out and we're going to drill a hole according to the directions. We're going to drill a hole right there and we're going to cut this side off. So, so we'll clamp it really good this side right there. And then uh, we'll drill, I'll tap it, just a little tiny tap, and then I'll drill a hole through it right here. For the drill bit size, I'll probably go with a 764 drill bit. This is a bi-metal drill bit. And uh, it'll give me a decent size hole to put the, uh, uh, the spring arm through. So let me tap it real quick with a little tap. And that gives us a little spot to... Uh, start with you can probably see that right there hopefully you'll get the idea here in just a little bit all right that was pretty easy luckily that wasn't hot <laughs> all right so there's the hole drilled that straight through it and that'll be the place that we're going to hook the hook to now we'll take that same side we'll clamp it right here back in the vise just on the arm get a good bite and then we're going to come back in and with a hacksaw we're going to hack this one side off let that cool for a second okay all right and that's what she'll part of look like and this piece will go on the bolt that actually goes uh, through this piece right here and we'll get that done. So let's move on over to our other section here. So with this piece here, this is the piece that's actually gonna slide up and down right here, just like that on one of these bolts here. So these are uh, two and a half inch uh, one, uh, in America, this is a quarter inch by 20 times two and a half inch. And it actually has the nut that we're going to use as well. Now this is a Phillips or flathead. And uh, this slides right into here. Goes right up in there. As you can see, it, it fits perfectly right in there. So we're going to follow the same instructions. Take this piece, put it right in there. We're going to kind of thread it on there. And bring that all the way down. Okay, now that we have that part put in there, as you can see, we're going to take the nut that came in the package and we'll go ahead and set that down in here and we'll epoxy that down inside just like it showed in the directions on his video for the other gimbal, the fourth axis gimbal. I don't really have an applicator stick, but that's okay. I got a screw here. So let's squeeze that out. Equal parts. Just a little bit. We don't need a whole bunch. Put the cap back on. And we'll stir that in a little bit. When it starts to turn cloudy, you're pretty much in the good to go in there. And we'll just take that. And we'll just go ahead and fill that sucker up. It's set in there really good. 
just like so. Let me get that set down in here in those threads. We'll go ahead and spread a little epoxy on top of the script threads up here on the top. Now I just take that and we're gonna thread that right on the top right here. And what we'll do is we'll thread that all the way on until it's about a millimeter from the bottom and we're gonna let that sit and cure. Now that I got that threaded on like this, we're gonna let that sit upside down and let that cure for about four hours. And we should be good to go. Now it's time to work on the fluid dampeners. So uh, after you've cut your parts, you wanna make sure that they all fit. So you slide the piece in here and you test it and you test each side, of course. So what we need to do now is we need to fill the uh, fluid dampener parts with the uh, heavy grease. So let's do that real quick. That way when we put it together, it'll be ready to go. So the heavy grease that I have available just happens to be like axle grease. Um, it's, it's actually a pretty decent grease. It's, it's, it's a heavy grease, but it's not ridiculous. So that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm fill each one of these little uh, rings here, the three holes with the grease in three different sections. So let's do that real quick. All right. And we'll take that, get it down side here, and we'll spin it around. Of course, we'll have to clean up any of the excess that comes out, which there most likely there's going to be some. All right, so fluid dampening. That's such a, I mean, wow, you know? All I got to say is, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> it, it, not only is it impressive, it just looks cool. I'm trying to explain how it feels. It feels tight, but just smooth. No problem. So I can understand the fluid dampening with the uh, heavy grease. Love it. I'm going to have to clean it up. I've already made a huge mess with the grease. Okay. As you can see, we got most of the parts already done. Um, with this piece here, that has finally had time to sit and dry. And we cut the piece off of the little wing nut here. So this is what it looks like completed. And uh, what you're going to do now is you're going to uh, just go ahead and screw the wing nut all the way up to the top here so you just twist this but uh, that's how that looked and that's how that turned out which is really really nice i mean pretty much exactly like they said it was going to be so that turned out good i don't know if it was necessary to file the back side of this down or not but i didn't um, i didn't think it was going to be a big issue so now another thing i did is i went and got a file and i actually ran the file uh, through like this just to get any debris and stuff out of the way i uh, went ahead and got stainless steel they call them light nylon lock nuts and i did these so these wouldn't back out and get loose over time okay first thing let's go ahead and get this piece mounted uh, you notice with this piece is there's a flat side and then there's kind of a bowed side well the bowed side is going to be facing up so the flat side is going to go down like this so you just take it and you line the notches up right here. You'll see the notches. You line them up with the fluid dampeners. So your holes line up. Take your bolt and guide it through. I'm going to go ahead and take the lock nut and go ahead and put the lock, the lock nut down inside here. As you can see, it fit down in there pretty good. Push it through. And we're going to just kind of tighten it a little bit. There we go. Now, once I get it started, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, push it through and tighten it up a little bit more, and then I'm gonna back it off, but I'm gonna do that with just a regular screwdriver. I'm gonna tighten it down where I feel it pretty tight. Okay, you can tell it's tight, and then I'm gonna back it off about a half a turn. All right, and then the, the nylon, nylon <laughs> nut should actually hold it in place and keep it from ever backing out in the future. We'll go ahead and grab the spring out, and uh, we're going to take our top one here. Now, you'll notice that uh, on this one, there's they're, they're close together on one side. We're going to put that opposite, okay? See how that's it is? 
I'm going to put the, this piece closer to towards the actual uh, gimbal head piece. So we'll put this one here. All right, we'll start it and we'll get the spring in there. I could push it, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to force nothing. Place that lock nut just like so. And we'll start to thread it in. Perfect. All right, now we're ready to start the other part here. So we're actually going to take this piece here and we're going to take this and we're going to spread it open because I figured this would be the easiest way. And you can see this is kind of disconnected here. So we're going to get a pair of needle nose and stick it through here. Okay, so as you can see, I got it through the, the eye hole that I drilled there um, through the wing nut. Uh, that was a challenge, so uh, just figure out how to get it and <laughs> two hands would work. Uh, the whole thing would actually work better with two pairs of hands, so just remember that. So first one we're going to do is the bottom first. So on the flat side here, we're just going to kind of turn it a little bit just like this to do the bottom one. Uh, the top one's going to be a little bit more challenging because of the uh, pull we're going to have to put onto the spring. But uh, let's go ahead and get those in. Just line our screw up bolt, run it through. All right, now we're going to take that screw and just kind of push it in. We'll go ahead and start tightening that onto that lock nut. All right, now we're tight. I'm going to half turn back. Perfect. Now here comes the challenging part, the last bolt here. We're going to have to get into the top. So we're just going to tilt this back until we can get it lined up. Yeah, it would have be easier to have two pairs of hands. Okay, well, I got it lined up, so go ahead and slide the whole bolt into. All right, now we're starting to screw into the nylon nut. We'll tighten that down. Okay, so I changed camera directions because I just realized you couldn't really see <laughs> with the lighting, but uh, um, there it is right there as the stabilizer. Now, um, I did find another spring right here that if this one turns out to be too powerful, because it is 11.46 uh, pounds. So um, this one is actually a lot lighter tension than uh, this spring. So I, I might switch to that one if I have to. Okay, so finally finished with it after a few modifications. Um, I went ahead and used this file inside of all of the holes um, to make sure everything was really loose and everything uh, because it was just everything was just too tight regardless of what I did it was just too tight I uh, went ahead and took this spring and um, changed it out to the other spring so um, you need to find something with a slightly smaller weight so like nine nine ten pounds other than that um, everything is perfect I used the other spring um, everything is really lightweight and uh, everything moves like it's supposed to it's real you can see even now it's just with nothing attached to it it's it's way better so uh, i'll show you in just a minute what it looks like and um, i'll uh, put it all on and you check check it out for yourself and tell me what you think okay so uh, this is the iSteady pro with the uh, hero 7 silver on it as you can see it's pretty smooth but and still unfortunately it does have some of the uh, bobbing that's what this is going to do. This is going to keep that bottom happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're just going to screw that to the bottom here. So now we have to adjust our spring to where it's level here. So we're going to take the spring until we start to see it kind of level up here. This also allows me to adjust for different types of cameras too. So if I have a different gimbal, I can do that. As crazy as that sounds, that movement that you're seeing right there, that's going to uh, be more stable than me doing this right here with just this, like this. 
or walking or whatever. So just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and start the GoPro. GoPro, start recording. Alright, so I'm going to hold this. Now I'm going to show you the footage of me shaking. So here's, you'll see, you'll see two types of footage here. Now you can see the, the shake. Okay. Now I'm going to hold the gimbal. Now, of course, we still have to do make sure this is adjusted perfectly because we don't know if this is adjusted yet or not. Now we're going to do the same thing. All right, now you see the footage. You see the difference. Now, of course, I'm still going to do the adjustments. I, I'm sure I'm going to have to do more adjustments. So counterclockwise, let's tighten it up a little bit more. Okay. All right, now you just be the judge of that and you tell me if that looks better to you or not. So let's do some walk test and uh, we'll see how well it does. So let's take a walk. See the way it walks with the GoPro. And you can see I'm walking with it, and this is the footage. And so let's turn. Okay, now I'm gonna jog a little bit. Okay. And of course, I'm going to be a lot more stable than this when I'm going to be trying to get footage. And I'm going to try to go uphill. Right. And I'm going to turn the camera so you can actually see what it looks like. So you should get both footages here. So I'm going to... Loosen it just a little bit. It feels like a little too tight to me, but that's just me. Alright, so here we go. I'm wait till you can see me in both films. Now I'm gonna just walk. Alright. Swing her around. I'm kind of going uphill a little bit. All right, now let's jog. Okay. And let's jog back. All right, so now we're going to use this line. If you look right here, that line, I'm going to shake it and we're going to see how much it does with the uh, the horizon you should be able to see the line moving up and down okay so there's the line use the line as your example for your horizontal up and down motion all right now i'm going to hold this just the gimbal itself you can see from the other camera and i'm going to shake it up and down the same way All right, so that should be a pretty good test. And uh, we'll do a shot in the mirror as well. Now, as you can see, I mean, I, I can use this motion up and down to uh, do some pretty smooth videos. That's my whole hopes, is that we can get some smoother shots and stuff. So that's the plans. And uh, crossing our fingers that it actually will make a difference. So um, here we go. Try some more shots, check these out. 